Uh, modernist fundamentalist controversy occurred in the 1920s. Um, and when I teach it, I typically talk about the social aspects of it. The high points being um, Scopes trial in 1925 and, and the effort to remove teaching of evolution from public schools, which wasn't simply um, to remove or an anti-science aspect. There were clearly that, if you read the, the transcripts of the trial, um, <clears throat> there's a real debate over science and faith. It's one of those recurring themes in the history of Christianity. But it was also very much concerned, William Jennings Bryan and others were concerned about eugenics, which was a prominent feature of the scientific establishment at the, at the point, the idea that you could breed better human beings. This is the fruition of Darwinism in many respects. And there were efforts at the time to restrict uh, uh, unfit people from, from procreating. And sometimes this even excluded, I mean, included Roman Catholics. I mean, the Protestants were worried that Roman Catholics were breeding like rabbits. So eugenics was a way to try to control the population. And Brian saw this in the, in the Scopes trial, um, um, the textbook that was under review at the Scopes trial did have eugenics taught in it. So it, this wasn't simply science versus faith. This was also sort of public health science that people were concerned about. So that's one aspect of it. <clears throat> Denominationally, there were controversies in the Baptist world over liberalism, theological liberalism. There was a controversy in the Presbyterian world over theological liberalism. And those dates don't coincide with, say, Scopes trial or some other things. So you have all these controversies coming together, some denominational, some political, that historians, as people typically tend to do, lump them all together and call them fundamentalist. But when you look at the particular aspects of it, say the Baptist one or the lectures I've just given here, the Presbyterian one, because they don't line up, in some ways you lose a real sense of what was going on in the Presbyterian side of this controversy if you just, just call it fundamentalist controversy. For instance, I was recently reading a piece by a grad student at Stanford trying to link Machen and his views on inerrancy through McIntyre to Schaefer to the Christian right, which was quite a set of, of, of lumping to do. But, <clears throat> and this guy, the student, didn't seem to be aware of the particular nuances to the Princeton view of inerrancy, other concerns that Machen had in his, um, in his efforts, his, his critique of liberalism, et cetera. So again, if you just use these categories like fundamentalist, evangelical, mainline, you miss a lot more detail that's going on. And for me, at least, what makes history fun is, is, the, is the variety. It's the way things don't line up. It's, um, it's the kind of jostling of ideas. So anyway, that's, there's a tension in, I mean, I, I sometimes write about this myself. You can divide historians in two groups. There are the splitters and there are the lumpers. People who use fundamentalism as a handle are the lumpers. I'm a splitter.